Welcome to the Book Lovers Podcast from the Claremont County Public Library. I'm Andrea, and today I'm here with Laura and Stacy to talk about books on our reading list. So, Laura, do you want to get started? Absolutely. I am more than happy to get this book loving party started. Perfect. So, my first book is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia which when Andrea shows us the book cover, you'll totally understand why I chose it because it is a gorgeous book cover. And I have to admit that I am shallow enough that sometimes I do actually choose books based on the cover alone. There's no, there's no time. issue with that. Or do you want to describe a little bit of the cover? So our listeners who are doing this on the podcast and not yeah. the video. So it's a, a Hispanic woman and she's sitting down, she's wearing this beautiful flowing burgundy uh, ball gown off the shoulder. She's holding some flowers and it looks like she's posed in front of some very Victorian patterned, probably flocked if you could touch it wallpaper. So it's very striking. Very rich oh. colors. That's yeah. gorgeous. Makes me happy. So give you a little bit about the book because it's not just about the cover. It has to be a good story too. After receiving a frantic letter from her newlywed cousin begging for someone to save her from a mysterious gym, Noemi travels to a distant house in the Mexican countryside, unsure of what she'll find. Noemi is a glamorous debutante with gowns and perfect red lipstick that are more suited for cocktail parties than amateur sleuthing. So she's totally an unlikely rescuer, which I think the cover actually perfectly captures that. That does, down to the red lipstick, look like a very young debutante. It does. I Yes. But along with being glamorous, she is tough and she's smart. So she finds her husband to be both menacing and alluring. His father, the ancient patriarch, is creepily fascinated by Noemi. And the old Gothic house where they're staying begins to invade her dreams with visions of blood and doom. Never good when the house does that. Right. <laughs> so her only ally in this remote, creepy, icky place is the youngest son of the family. He's shy and gentle, and he seems to want to help her, but he's also hiding dark secrets about his family's past. As Noemi searches for the truth, she unearths stories of violence and madness because if you're going to live in a creepy goth mansion, you have got to have tales of death and madness. Absolutely. Family, right? So anyway, I, great book. Loved it. I think, don't you have some read-alike suggestions? I do. You do because you're awesome? I, well, I'm not because of that, just because I can find them. I picked Confessions of Franny Langdon. So after you had told me about this book, I went looking for books that have gothic fiction as a subject heading. And right. this was one I found. And um, Fran Franny's accused of a double m murder of her employers, a scientist and his wife. And she doesn't remember anything about the night, not even if it could save her life. But she remembers a story of her childhood on a Jamaican plantation, her apprenticeship under a scientist, and it stretched all the bounds of ethics and the events that brought her across the Atlantic to London into his home. So it's a passionate and forbidden relationship. Oh, that sounds really good. I've not heard of it. That actually sounds really good. I think I might have to add it to my ever-growing yeah. to be read list yeah, to be read list yeah i think it came out last year so it's fairly new that sounds good all right laura do you okay. want to tell us about a bad day for sunshine yes book number two bad day for sunshine by dorinda jones so this book has me super excited because i'm a huge fan of dorinda jones's uh first series that she wrote the charlie davidson series which if you are a fan of paranormal romances, try First Brave on the right, which is the first book in the series. And there's a bonus, bonus, super hunky love interest. So <laughs> if the kind of thing floats your boat, go for it. So Bad Day for Sunshine is the first book in a new series that she's writing. And this one, no paranormal stuff, just a straight mystery, but still super, super fun writing. Sunshine Vikram has returned to her small hometown with teenage daughter Ari in tow. 
Sunny's the newly elected sheriff, and there is no chance for her to ease into her new role because her day starts off with a delivery to the office of the Muffins of Doom. Cattle, capitals all implied there. <laughs> um, it escalates when a frantic mother crashes her car into the sheriff's department, nearly running Sunny over as the car comes through the front wall wow. uh, because the woman's daughter has been abducted. And then there's the rooster napping that she needs to solve. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't want to read about rooster napping? Right. Muffins of Doom, rooster napping, it's got it all. That's so awesome. all the things that I love about the Charlie Davidson books, the witty conversation, Charlie's love for coffee, and the quirky people in the books who still manage to have deep heartfelt connections with each other are all here in this new series. So fast-paced, well-plotted, absolute page turner. I unashamedly read this in an entire day. I was like, do not disturb me to the husband and the cats. And they mostly <laughs> obeyed. And I spent a Saturday reading. So Sounds definitely awesome. recommend it. Two thumbs up. Perfect way to spend a Saturday. Yeah. It was. It was great. All right. And for your third book. So my third and final book. So this is The Boyfriend Project by Vera Rashawn. And thanks to social media, three women discover that they have been dating the same lowlife guy because one of them is live tweeting her bad date with him and the other two are reading it. So they oh, decide, no. right? And the live tweeter is like, you should come join us. And so oh. the two women show up and everyone tells him he's an absolute jerk. And so they all break up with him, but they end up being starting a friendship based on this. So strangers are witnessing it capturing this ultimate shiro moment and the video goes viral so a little bit of notoriety there so the three of them agree to swear off men for at least six months they decide that they're going to focus on themselves their careers and their budding friendship which is exactly when our main character samaya a super smart tech whiz notices how gorgeous daniel her new co-worker is because of course that's when you notice right <laughs> said no more. And you've sworn off, yes. <laughs> yes. So she's drawn to him, but what about the promise she's made to the other two? And even if she breaks the pact, does she have time for a new relationship? Her career yeah. is really intense, and she's got a side hustle um, creating a new app. I so, love a side hustle. Well, and that serious side hustle, too. I yeah. mean, building a new app, that's not like something you just, you well, know, just happen. moment. That's time yeah. consuming. So he totally seems too good to be true. So is he? I appreciated that Rashan didn't focus solely on the romance. It was nice to have a lot of lady time with three strong, smart women who were all very supportive and encouraging with each other. And I do believe that I read somewhere that the two friends are also going to get their own books. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading those. Cool. So cool. it's the first Fair Rashawn books that I've ever read. And I have to say, I'm going to read more because I like this one. So fast paced, sparkling with a little bit of steam, which is the perfect combination for romance. So this is perfect summertime. Summer read. Yes. Perfect book for it. That's awesome. I love the cover and I love, I love that the new, like the new genre of romance is not the like classic bodder, bodice ripper. Right. Oh, right. Not it's the like, clench. Yeah, the it's hair. like the modern, like this, this type of like art. Illustration. Yeah, illustration on the cover. Like I've been seeing a lot of this. It's been a big trend, I think, the last yeah. two years for fiction romance that appeals to probably a younger reader than what mm -hmm. the bodice rippers have historically appealed to. And so I also picked, if you like this, you might also yeah. like books by Abby you know how I'm terrible at pronouncing it. <laughs> and then also, when I saw this cover, I thought of Jas Jasmine Gilroy's books because it's that same illustrated cover. Yeah. And her this isn't her first book, but the proposal was a Reith Reese Witherspoon Sunshine Ooh. Book Club. Oh, cool. or Hello Sunshine Book Club pick. I do um, like Jasmine, too. Yeah, and, and there's I'm like... Super big fan. I think The Wedding Date is the first in the First series. one which also super good about very 
successful, confident women. I mean, it's nice back in the old days because I'm old enough to remember the bodice rippers and reading them, you know, it's like, oh, look, the strong, wealthy, all powerful man will rescue right. Cinderella and happily ever after because he will fix all of her problems with his power and his wealth. And it's actually nice to see supportive, uh, you know, women being supportive of each other, but for confident, yeah. successful women, you know, they don't need the man to come in and fix things for them. Mm -hmm. Right. And like, I the, think is nice. In the proposal, she gets proposed to, it's a surprise, and she doesn't accept the proposal. Oh, oh. <laughs> and then what that creates yeah. so I do I love the cover so like on the boyfriend project like her stance like she looks very like confident and like kind of like sassy I'm sure of herself so she's not like submissive to, to right. him like the kind of like the traditional romance covers would suggest so well I like it I have to say that as somebody who's read romances for a long time, it's actually, I don't feel embarrassed to walk around with that right. <laughs> cover, but oh my goodness, some of the ones in the past with the very dramatic, you know, she's basically in lingerie and some, you know, Fabio long hair guy is bare chest and it's just mm -hmm. like, because you know, if you read those in public, people make an assumption. Absolutely. Right. And I'm like, this? Nobody is going to look at that and think, mm. yeah. not that that stopped me from reading those cheesy romances, but still, <laughs> it's nice to not feel embarrassed by the cover. All right. You don't no. have to answer strangers' questions about your book. Yes. Well, All nobody right. should be embarrassed anyway about what they read, but, but this cover is a lot more attractive and modern I think than right. traditional covers. I'm here for it. I like yeah, it. Yeah. I like it. Cool. All right. Stacy, do you want to share some books? Okay. Yes. And I did I I did it a little differently. I put up my own read alikes. I hope that's okay. That is perfect. And please try them because the read alikes like you, Andrea, like I just I found them with my librarian skills. But if either of you have read either of the read alikes, try feel free to chime in on them. So my first book is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. And this is what I'm currently reading. So I've not finished it yet. And I am, this is not a new book. I am late to the game on this book. This was Lee Bardugo's debut novel. And it just like, she just like skyrocketed after this. So this is the first book in a trilogy. I have read her duology, Six of Crows, which actually which came after this trilogy but the characters are different but the worlds are the same like it's set in the same world so you notice at the top of the book it says that grisha verse so she came up with this whole entire fantasy world surrounding grisha who are people that have these like magical powers there are people that can control like the elements. There are heart renders that can like stop your heart from beating or revive you. So they can like kill you or they can save you. It's very, very interesting. So in the first book, there are um, two main characters and they grew up together, a boy and a girl, Mal and Alina. And they grew up in an orphanage together. And then as young adults, they are, have been conscripted to the king's army. So Mal is a tracker and Alina is a cartographer. But then she discovers that she has a Grisha power that she didn't know that she possessed. So she is whisked away, taken out of, unwillingly taken out of the king's army and sent to live with the Grisha. So there's this, um, of, of course, with like all fantasy books, there's a map in, in the front of the book. Um, so you want to like study the map to, to find out like all of the, like the, the cities that they talk about and the places. So the main area that her fantasy is set in is called Ravka. And it's kind of like czarist Russia. There's a lot of like she's made up this language and there's a lot of the that kind of like i don't know like throaty like russian sounds so it's it's a be it's beautifully written and like it's just all the characters are vividly drawn but each sentence is just like its own little like masterpiece she's just such a good writer but in the middle of ravka there's this valley 
kind of. It's called the Shadow Fold, and it's filled with these like terrible flesh eating monsters. And yes, it's very, it's very violent. It's, it's, this is a YA book. It is for teens. So it's not totally, you know, like Game of Thrones level, but it is very like fantasy driven and violent and stuff. But they think that the power that Alina possesses, that she can um, destroy the shadow fold. So that is what the trilogy is about. Whoa. Whoa. Is, yeah, that was a <laughs> mouthful. <laughs> A there's a lot there's a lot going on and shadow and bone is is going to be turned into a netflix series oh so, oh fun so That's yes so you're gonna want to read it now. first the last i heard they did finish filming the first season before you know coronavirus shut everything down but there's not a release date yet on netflix so i don't know when it's coming out Cool. Yeah. So just a couple of read-alikes here. Leonie Taylor, really not just the series Strange the Dreamer, but any of her books would be great read-alikes. And Maggie Stiefvater, Call Down the Hawk, which is kind of a spinoff of The Raven Boys. So either of, the, either of those um, authors, any of their books would be really good read-alikes. Great. And, you, and they're trying to night. Oh, sorry, Laura. I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you? I got all excited. I know. We both want to talk. <laughs> have you? Have either of you read her first adult novel called *The Ninth House*? No, no I, I still have an arc of it at home. It's on my to be read list. But have, did you read it? I did, and I really liked it. I hadn't read any of her other books, yeah. but I picked that up. And yes, it's all about secret societies and magic and it's set in an ivy league school so it's oh. somebody who comes from a very poor background and she's at the school on a scholarship because she has magical abilities so it's kind of that interesting look at class background plus who has magic what do they use it for mm -hmm. so yeah that i can recommend that too that also is excellent awesome ninth house okay Awesome. And I do have to say, I love the cover on Shadow and Bone. That is beautiful. This is a new cover. So I'm trying to think of what the original, I can't remember what the original cover looked like, but this is a newer edition. Uh, but I think the whole trilogy got new covers. So a little bit oh. updated because it was, I think, first published in 2012. So it's not a new series. Oh, wow. It's new to me. Yeah. All right. Okay. For your second pick. Second pick. I have I have a narrative nonfiction for my second pick. So. Love that. Yeah. I actually I read this one when we were working from home. So it is available as, actually, I think all three of my, well, no, the first two picks are available as digital downloads from our library. So I did read this one at home on my Kindle. Yeah. So it's The Radium Girls, The Dark Story of America's Shining Women by Kate Moore. So this was kind of like, not the book, but like the story is kind of like a train wreck as in like, it's so horrific, but like you can't look away, like you can't stop reading about it. Wow. So of course it's nonfiction, so it's all true. This all happened. So in 1917, there was a Radium Luminous Materials Corporation. And I wanna say it was in, Chicago. There were a couple of different radium corporations, kind of like in the Midwest and then on the East Coast. So basically they hired young girls, like teenagers, and then ma mainly teenagers and like young adults to work on radium, luminous radium dials. So they used radium to paint these dials um, for soldiers in World War I. So they would have watches that um, would light up at night. So, of course, the girls didn't know that radium was poisonous and dangerous, and they were actually told, actually all, all of America was told, the world was told, that radium was good for you. Oh. So, radium used to be included in, like, beauty products and tonics, and a lot of the stuff wasn't regulated. So, did it act, like, did those products actually have radium in it, or did the companies just claim that they did? Probably more of the latter. But the girls were actually told that radium was good for them. So it was actually a really glamorous job for these girls to be hired as dial painters. They got paid really well. 
and they, it was kind of like their own little society. Like they sat in these huge rooms and they got to like talk and chat and they had like nice lunches together and stuff. But what they were told to do was they used a tiny paintbrush because the watch faces were very, very small. So they used a teeny tiny brush and they lip pointed, which means they, they dipped their paintbrushes in the radium, put it in their mouths, licked the licked the paintbrush and painted because that's what they were instructed to do and they didn't know that it was poisonous. So after a while, many of the girls started having tooth problems. <laughs> um, their teeth would fall out and then it would just keep getting worse and worse. Like they would go to the dentist, the dentist didn't know what was happening. They would do an extraction and then like a couple months later, entire pieces of their jawbone just would come out. It is... The descriptions in the book are like, like I said, like a train wreck. They're just uh, absolutely horrific. And like, if you, it was, it was so sad, but like the girls didn't, they didn't know any better because they were told mainly by men that ran the company that, you know, it was good for them. So they would actually go home shining at night because radium is luminous. So they like their hair, their, their faces, their whole bodies like the dust, the radium dust would just settle on them and then they'd walk home at night glowing in the dark. And people just thought they were like amazing and oh, I want to work there. And they would like go out dancing and they'd be glowing in the dark, like, oh. and, like dancing and stuff. Like, so it was just, like, I mean, people wear glow yes. necklaces now to go like uh, mm-hmm. electronic dance festivals, yes. but yes, yeah, not wearing radium. <laughs> no. So eventually a lot of the women ended up developing like a lot of them developed something that was similar to what is called fossy jaw. So it was like people that worked with phosphorus, they would have like these huge tumors on um, their faces and like their jaws or like their whole jaws would be missing. A lot of the women developed like sarcoma tumors in their backs and like just anywhere in their arms and their legs and stuff. So it was just, it was just really so sad, but It is also a very uplifting story because eventually several of the women band together. So the picture at the top of the book, you see, that's one of the hearings, the court hearings, because they eventually brought a suit against the radium, luminous radium company. And I won't spoil the ending, but it is, it is a horrible story, a horrible moment in our history, but it is ultimately uplifting. Wow. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. I mean, I don't think that's the right reading. But you, you know, glad to see something a little yeah. bit comes from it. So yes, and K. Moore is actually releasing a young readers edition for okay. like middle grade readers about the Radium Girls, and it's going to be published in September. Oh, cool! So, yeah, I always like when they do that <laughs> with the the nonfiction books that they create a yeah a, an appropriate level for younger readers on these. Right. Yes. Cool. So there's a couple of read alikes more about women in history kind of like banding together and, you know, they're fighting for their rights or, you know, helping out the atomic, the girls of Atomic City were all about women in World War II and then Hidden Figures, which was made into a huge movie. And that one was also adapted into a young readers edition and, with, and a picture book edition. Picture book, yeah. Mm-hmm. So really good um, choices all about women here. Love it. Women kicking butt. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Okay, my last choice is a new book. And I it's still on order for us. So I don't I don't know if it's arrived yet, but but you can put it on hold. And I downloaded it as an advanced reader copy. So I started it a few weeks ago and I'm about halfway through it. It's a pretty short book. And it's actually very terrifying because it's kind of similar to like what we've been experiencing with coronavirus. So there's this virus that is kind of like a mutated form of rabies. So with rabies, if an animal or if a person gets infected, it usually takes, I think, several weeks for the rabies virus to uh, like make its way to your brain. And if it does, then it's kind of like game over. Like there's nothing to be done about it. But in this book, Survivor Song um, by Paul Tremblay, the rabies virus takes one hour to attack your brain if you're bitten. So 
animals, people have been bitten. Like it's just this virus has taken over. Hospitals are overrun. There's vigilantes out in the streets. Beforehand, people were quarantined and like food was being rationed. So like that reminded, like when we were working from home during quarantine, it reminded me of that. And I was like, oh my gosh, what has Paul Tremblay, (laughs) what has he done? Toilet paper? Were they having shortages (laughs) on toilet paper? (laughs) Probably toilet paper and, and, you know, meat and food and all that stuff. So yeah. yeah. So the story is this woman, her name is Natalie. She is eight months, almost nine months pregnant, almost her due date, and she's a first-time mother, and she watches her husband get brutally murdered by Mm -hmm. someone who's infected, and she ends up getting bitten as well. So she has like an hour to get the first round of vaccine, vaccine shot or antidote shot, So she calls her good friend from university, who's now a pediatrician, and it's basically like these two women against the world. So they're trying to do what they can to save Natalie, and if that's not possible, to at least save her baby. So it's very, it's very fast paced. It's obviously, there's a lot of violence in there, so if that's your thing, but, and it it is also ultimately like, not the whole book, but a uplifting moments and like so you see like like moments of strength between these two women just trying to do what they can to survive so apocalyptic type of titles if you're interested in that Justin Cronin's The Passage and Cormac McCarthy's The Road are really good read-alikes as well Joe Hill The Fireman would be a good read-alike too so very very good very fast-paced if action is your your thing I think you would really enjoy this one Sound like some good picks, yeah. all of them, from both yeah. of you. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing. Absolutely. This was fun. <laughs> it was something a little different for us to do it on video, but we'll see how the public likes it. I also want to remind you that all these books are available in the library's collection, whether they're print or they're digital from one of our services like Overdrive, Hoopla, or RB Digital. And also RB Digital has magazines It's a newer feature for us. So there's over 3,400 magazine titles available in RB Digital Magazine. So I want to share that and go and find all your favorites. Anything else to add? I'll um, I'll post this on the website. Oh, yes. I'll actually have links to the books and stuff. So if people haven't written them down or made a note of them watching, you can tell it's been a while since I've done a podcast with you, Laura. I forgot our, I our closing that we <laughs> put up the show notes on claremontlibrary.org so you don't have to write down everything we talked about as we talked about it. And if you find this video version, you can at least look at the beautiful covers and the intriguing covers because as we know, we do judge a book by its cover and that's okay. It makes us grab it. It does. Well, and Stacy and I clearly have excellent <laughs> taste in covers. We do books and the covers Ooh, yes yeah. and they run the gamut it's not the same so. yeah well that's why they release like you know bestsellers with new new edition covers because sometimes the original covers just don't really grab your attention so. that's right yeah. that's right all right well this was fun until next time read on reader yeah happy reading